Hi everyone and welcome to Rum Runner Dance. I'm Dan Genovese. Today we're making a legendary tiki cocktail, Puka Punch. Puka Punch is a, a legendary tiki cocktail, but before we could really get into it, we have to go back and talk about an amazing bar, uh, an amazing tiki bar, one of the oldest tiki bars that's still around and functioning right now, Tiki Tea in Los Angeles, California. It was founded in 1961, but you can't talk about Tiki Tea unless you talk about Ray Boon. Ray Boon is an amazing mixologist, bar owner, and knowledge saver of all the tiki history that came from when tiki started. He was one of the original bartenders at Don the Beachcomber back in 1934 when Don opened up his bar. He spent the next 30 years at various different tiki establishments around California, including uh, China Trader, the Luau, as well as the Seven Seas. So over that time, he amassed this wealth of knowledge and trade secrets around what kind of rums to blend together for different drinks, which syrups to use, what went in them, what kind of citrus to use, and in what proportions. Remember, back when Tiki first started, there was none of this books about cocktails and tiki cocktails and it wasn't shared or published um nobody really knew them so the only way you learned it is if you got a job in the bar and you made the drinks and then that's the way that you learn them so way after that time he he bought a violin shop a violin shop that he bought was off of his father-in-law, and he converted this small violin shop in Los Angeles, California, into Tiki Tea in 1961. It's still there today. None of the other bars that uh, that Ray worked at originally are still open. Found the Beachcomber closed, Luau is closed, um, and the Seven uh, Seven Seas is closed, and so is the China Trader. All of those places have closed down, but Tiki Tea remains, and for really good reason. You know, he took every one of these wealth of knowledge of cocktails from all these different places, the best of them, and as well as his own creations, and brought them to Tiki Tea. And one of those great creations is this drink, Puka Punch. Um, so Puka Punch, as you can see, is not a simple drink. It's definitely a tiki drink. There is a lot of ingredients that go into it, but every single one of them is worth it and for the end product. So Ray created this drink back in 1961 and Tiki Tea today still serves it along with almost 90 other cocktails. And the most interesting thing about this, trendy bars are popping up all around town in, in Los Angeles and they come and they go. Now Tiki Tea did change some of their things uh, to match what clientele was wanting, you know, like they added some tequila into their drinks. But something that you'll never get, no, you're not going to get beer there. You're not going to get wine. Um, that's not something they have. What do they have? They have 90 amazing exotic tiki drinks. You get to pick one, sit down, and enjoy. Let's go ahead and let's start making the drink. So the version of the recipe that I'm using today is slightly varied. And I do mean ever so slightly. I'm using the one um, that uh, was adapted by Smuggler's Cove and is in Martin Rebecca Kate's book, Smuggler's Cove. Um, which you can pick up. The main difference between that and the original recipe, which the original recipe you can also get, which is in Beach Bum Berry's remix, um, it, it's a small amount on the honey syrup as well as on the flanair. So drink mixer today, we're gonna start least expensive, most expensive ingredient. So today it, it calls for a dash of aromatic bitters. Uh, the aromatic bitters that I'm using today is from Miss Better Bitters, and this is their batch 42. 
aromatic bitters. Six drops is equal to a dash. All right, that's our bitters. Now, next thing, lime juice. Lime juice here, we're gonna need an ounce. Next, fresh squeezed orange juice. Um, the orange juice that I like to use for the, uh, pretty much all of my cocktails is Car Car orange juice. That's what this one is. That's why it's a little bit pinkish y in hue. This one we're going to use three quarters of an ounce. Okay. Next, this big bottle here is this is fresh pineapple juice that I juiced myself today. Um, if you don't have your own juicer and you don't want to juice your own pineapples, um, that's completely fine. You can either buy the juice fresh from a store. Um, that's a perfectly fine alternative as long as it was juiced that day because pineapple juice doesn't last very long. Um, or you can buy unsweetened canned pineapple juice. Make sure it's just unsweetened and the only ingredient on the back is pineapple juice. That should be all that's in it. Um, you can use that. That's completely fine. Um, this, what we're going to need is three quarters of an ounce as well. Okay. Now, for our sweeteners. Next thing we're going to use is honey syrup. Now, I, I don't have honey syrup. I don't eat honey. Um, but uh, so what I'm doing here is an agave syrup. Uh, which is basically a raw organic agave to in warm water mixed together. If you're going to use honey, um, you can use any honey that you like. As long as you like the flavor of it, I'd pick something, you know, with some good flavor to it, something that you would really like to come through in the drink. Don't pick something that's really, really light in flavor because yeah, it will kind of just get lost then. You want, you want to be able to taste it a little bit. Um, I recommend that you use two to one um, in terms of the honey strength syrup and all that means is twice as much honey um, to warm water. So uh, in here I have two ounces of agave syrup and one ounce of warm water and just shake it up. Works out great and the reason that you dilute honey down, especially honey, is because when it mixes in a mixer or sh gets shaken, it doesn't like to shake well. It, gets, it clings to things and the colder it gets, the more it clings. and more solidified it gets. By diluting it down with a little bit of water helps it to, to mix through. So this is going to be um, Smuggler's Co version calories for an ounce of this. So we're gonna use one ounce of our syrup. All right. Next, passion fruit syrup. A passion fruit syrup here, you can use any kind that you like, just get a good quality one. This one um, is homemade. Um, you don't have to use homemade. So this is going to be three quarters of an ounce. All right, next we're going to go and grab our John D. Taylor's Velvet Flanarum new bottle. All right, so with this, we're going to use half an ounce. Stuff is great if you never had it before. It's very, very common in tiki drinks. It's also not very expensive. Um, you can make this on your own. It takes a little while and I'm not keen on making my own. And this product is great, so I just use that. Next, uh, next, this is where kind of, um, it kind of depends upon your bar. Now, when you're in what rums you have. Martin and Rebecca Kate's book is really useful in the fact that they categorize rums. You've probably heard me say that before. And what it does is it allows you to substitute in like rums that are made in similar ways, therefore will have similar flavors that come through. However, the end flavor profile is vastly different based upon each rum that you have. But you, you can get something close. So in this case, what we're looking for is a lightly aged rum. Um, you wouldn't go wrong here with like a Plantation 3 Star, Florida Can of 3, um, Denison 3 Year. That works really nice. I happen to have Appleton Estate here, and I like Appleton. So I'm going to use Appleton Estate. One ounce of the Appleton Estate. All right. 
Next, what you're gonna want is a blended aged rum. Um, in this case, the one that I'm using is Plantations uh, Reserve. It's Plantation Five Year um, or Grand Reserve. Uh, I think they updated the name now. It's just called, nope, no, yeah. They still have Grand Reserve written on there, yeah. Um, we're gonna do an ounce of this guy as well. I love Plantation. Their rum is really good. Um, also, I have to admit, it's probably by far and away my favorite bottle with the rum I'm eating, but how cool is that? I, mean, I love having this bottle around. <laughs> I like the rum. It's just really helpful that the bottle looks cool, too. Next, what you're, uh, this calls for is a dark aged rum. Now, dark aged rum, this is where you can kind of go a little bit wrong pretty quick. Some rums are just dark artificially meaning that they're colored by the manufacturer. So you have to be careful here. Um, Martin and Rebecca Kate's book really helps uh, identify some good ones that you can use. Uh, only thing that they don't call for in here, but I think would work really well is like a Hamilton uh, Jamaican black pot still rum. I think it'd be fine. Um, however, you can use uh, Blackwell's um, would work really well with this too. I'm using Hamilton 86. This is a Demerara rum. It's a dark Demerara rum. Um, it works amazingly well in this drink. Um, so uh, you could also use Lemon Heart and Sons 1804. Would work really, really nicely in here. Uh, this one is just three quarters of an ounce. Okay. Now, that takes care of the ingredients that go into here. However, we're gonna pour out for ourselves for our float. I'm just gonna grab myself a easier jigger here to pour this out of, of our overproofed rum. Overproof rum that we're working on right here is, this is Lemon Heart and Sun 151. Um, it's absolutely amazing, tasty, tasty rum. I love Hamilton 151, Lemon Heart 151. You cannot go wrong with these, uh, with those rums. All right, leave that to the side. That's going to be a float for later. Now, we need to put ice in here. So, with most of Martin and Rebecca Kate's books, all their drinks that use the drink mixer all call for 12 ounces of ice. So we're going to do 12 ounces crushed ice. Um, alternative to ice, crushed ice, if you don't want to pulverize it with a bar towel uh, and a mallet, <laughs> uh, make a lot of noise in your house, or buy a really noisy ice crusher like I have, um, you can just go to your local Sonic and um, you can buy a bag of pebble ice from them. Uh, it looks really cool, they're really, really small, and they're perfect size for crushed ice. It's perfectly acceptable to use in here too. We're going to flash blend this for four seconds. Right now, glass for this. I really enjoy the large brandy snifter. I don't think that we've used that on this show yet, um, but um, I wanted to break it out for you here. It's absolutely fantastic um, vessel. This uh, this one to to serve this drink in, you need it to be 22 ounces. So it's a large brandy glass. Um, this one is a little bit thin for my taste in terms of its construction. So if you can get a little bit thicker one, that's great. Um, but I, I've had, I had good luck with it. But you want it to be big because you need to fill this up with some ice. Uh, it's a pretty potent drink. All right, so there we go. There's that drink. Now we're gonna top this off with more crushed ice. Next thing that we're gonna do here for is garnish. Garnish is really nice, it's really easy, it's really simple. So it's just gonna be some mint. Before we put the mint in there though, we're gonna take our three quarters ounce of our overproof rum. We're gonna slowly pour that right over the top of that drink. Let that sit with that 
dark line right on the top. You can see that nice little dark line right on top there. All right. Trusty mint saver. Lovely mint. I like to get a nice big, you know, bundle of mint here for this drink. nice smells beautiful all you gotta do is just give this a little crush or a little slap okay either one works we're gonna go ahead and grab that I'm gonna tuck that in right like that right there now next thing trusty surfside sips mug so cool thing is is this glass you don't use a big straw use a little small one here I'm gonna use my bamboo guy with my little tiny turtle on it um, for these straws here um, you can click the link below use code rumrunner20 and you save 20% off your order All right next grab one of these medalla coasters here from Wood Row Coasters. And there you have it, everyone. That Smuggler's Cove adaptation of the original 1961 TGT recipe for Puka Punch. Now, normally right here, I'd say, okay, let's give it a taste. But I'm going to do something a little bit different here this time. This drink came from TGT. It's a bar that I have not yet been able to go to. Um... I really got into Tiki at the beginning of COVID. I still would like to go there. Um, hopefully it's opened up in the future where I could actually go, but they have an amazing tradition there. Um, Mike uh, Buin and Mike's son, Mike Jr., um, run the bar um, at Tiki T. And every single Wednesday night, there's a picture of Ray on the wall and they do uh, a cheers to him. Like they get, they, everyone raises their glass to um, to Ray in honor of him and not just him but also what he did for the you know Filipino culture coming in business owner um, self-made man you know really hard worker built a great business it, it stands stands the test of time and um you know in that built a, this legacy that still lives on to this day it's just an amazingly good story and it's an awesome little tradition um it's you know and it's a wednesday night that they always do this on obviously i'm not you know you guys are seeing this it's released on a saturday but you know take this recipe and make this on wednesday so i'm gonna raise my glass here to ray Buin, the master ninja I mean, if you like tropical drinks, you like tiki drinks, <laughs> and not talking umbrella drinks, I'm not saying stuff like pina colada, um, this is the drink for you. This is a tasty, citrusy, rummy flavored drink, and it, it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious. Um, you know, the, the citrus melds together into this great tropical note nice and sweet um, from the agave syrup the honey would come through if it used honey syrup here and that passion fruit syrup it's nice and sharp and sweet at the same time sharp and sweet the bitters you think you would lose it with all this but you don't um it, it adds a spice flavor to this now with some of the rums here you're going to get some spice flavor too but it helps accentuate it and this better bitters um, um aromatic bitters they have a good spice Good smell to them um, and that comes through in the drink really nice flanarum amazing you get a little bit of that uh, um, hogo note from the uh, Appleton here nice solid you know rum flavor here from the five-year Demerara you're getting that central Demerara flavor which is like really oaky and it helps with that spice flavor and the great thing is I'm not a mixer so if somebody floats something on there, that's something that you're supposed to slowly let, you know, melt into the drink and it becomes part of it. So the drink, as it starts to get, you're starting to get to the bottom, you get like this hint of like, whoa, 
it's a little bit of a, a, a punch of rum there. So I like to leave it there on top. You can feel free to stir it into um, if you'd like as well. Um, but I save that till the end. But this would definitely give you some a little bit more of a kick, and it'll also give you that oak flavor, nice nice forward oak flavor. Um, it, it's an absolutely fantastic drink. Um, I recommend that all of you guys give it a try. Um, if you can, you know, make it on Wednesday, and after you make it, you know, raise your glass to Ray, and just remember, you know, uh, all the people that worked really hard and made them made themselves into the great success that they were, um, and that those successes and those legacies are still living on today. So that's it for our show today. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you to all our subscribers. And if you haven't, please click that subscribe and that little bell button. You get notified every single time one of our uh, shows is coming out. And until next time, everybody, Ole Maluna. Yeah, I'm going to drink the whole thing. But you knew that.